From Nebraska's trusted news source, this is Channel 8 News at 5. Coming up tonight, officially announced today, a Supreme Court justice is retiring. Plus, two people have been arrested in connection to a shooting in Kearney. And a new bill would create a program to help some inmates be released earlier. But first tonight, we start with a developing story. An LPS bus driver is facing disciplinary action after a student was left on a bus. Lincoln Public Schools says on Tuesday around 11 a.m., a staff member found the child walking around the transportation center parking lot. The bus had been parked there since a little before 9 a.m. LPS says the driver did not walk the entire bus to check seats before leaving, which is in violation of their safety protocols. The student was then safely taken to Lakeview Elementary. And back to our top story tonight, a bill that could give specific inmates a conditional early release was discussed today at the state capitol. Channel 8's Ariana Martinez explains how the bill would work. LB831 would create a diversion program and look at conditional release for pregnant or postpartum mothers who are the main caregivers for children. Nature Villegas was the only person to speak from a neutral standpoint. She is also the only woman in the room who has given birth in prison. 11 years ago, I was addressed from the state of Nebraska as inmate 97313. I have to take this down. Um, I went to York Penitentiary. I found out I was pregnant in county jail. It was a very excruciating experience. Um, but I want to speak on behalf of, I'm neutral because I love the bill. The problem, the issue I have is maybe more of a case-by-case -case approach. Viega stated that because she was protecting herself in a domestic violence situation, on paper she was a violent offender, which would exclude her from a program like this. It is incentive to get involved in programming, to get right for our kids and figure out the way. And the more that we have these resources, that's preventative. Those for this bill want to keep families together, especially in the first year of a baby's life, as one positive. Others include it will help alleviate uh, the overcrowding in our correctional facilities because we see that jails are feeders into them. So we have to begin on that front end as well. Um, it allows parents to continue to be providers for their children and <coughs> increase the risk of familial cycles of incarceration. The director of Nebraska Department of Correctional Services spoke about a nursery program in our state already in place and was opposed to this bill. I don't have the resources, components, structure, staff or anything else to supervise this in the community. The bill would leave the discretion up to counties for what offenses would be excluded from this diversion program. And Mothers Against Drunk Driving was there to make sure one offense was added. Matt urges an amendment to LB 831 to ensure that any DUI charge would disqualify an individual from being eligible for diversion. You are encouraged to write to your senators to share your thoughts on this bill before it makes it to debate. Reporting in Lincoln, Ariana Martinez, Channel 8 News. Also from the Capitol today, a bill aimed at keeping children out of the juvenile court system. Many children are in the system because of truancy, which is missing too many days of school. This bill would instead connect the children and their family with resources to help instead of going to court. Some senators worry this is making light of serious problems and would take away tools needed to keep a handle on these children. Excessive absenteeism. Why don't we call it what it is? Truancy. What's wrong with the word truancy? What's wrong with calling it what it is? Excessive absenteeism is another feel-good moment for us in the legislature to put our arms around children. By the way, some of these children are stabbing each other. They are public safety threats. An amendment would allow each county to create a diversion program with funding. And if that program still does not work for the child and they're missing school, then a judge can charge them with truancy. Now to new details on a shooting in Kearney earlier this month. Two teenagers are now behind bars, but police say the investigation is far from over. Police arrested 18-year-old Joshua Morris and 19-year-old Mariah Chamberlain in Grand Island. Right now, police are not accusing them of murder in the shooting on January 16th that killed 31-year-old Jaron Shinpa. We've been told the teens may have critical information in the case. Police ask anyone that also has information to please come forward. 
Lancaster County deputies say they found hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of drugs in an RV. It happened near the I-80 and I-180 interchange. LSO says there was 254 pounds of marijuana and around $150,000 worth of cocaine. A man from New Jersey was arrested. And Lincoln police say they found a woman stabbed and a man hanging from a rope. It happened at a home near 27th and Capitol Parkway. Officers went in the home after they heard someone screaming for help. Police say they found a 32-year-old woman with multiple cuts and a 37-year-old man hanging in the basement. They're both now in critical condition. To COVID news now, the variant known as Stealth Omicron has been found in Nebraska. The Douglas County Health Department found two cases of the new variant earlier this week. The two people who tested positive have a history of international travel. The county's health di uh, director says Stealth Omicron just has a bad name because Nebraska is still able to find it using the same kind of testing. In Nebraska, we have three labs that are capable of doing sequencing, which is fantastic because um, we have more capability compared to some of the other states, so we're very lucky. And the three labs, including one at Great University, is able to sequence all these variants and then keep an eye on what variant are we seeing. The stealth variant has been detected in more than 40 countries and several U.S. states, although a lot is still unknown about it. In Denmark, though, it made up 45 percent of all COVID-19 cases in the country in mid-January. As digital classrooms become more common, they do bring some advantages. Video can get students into places they never would have been allowed before, including an operating room. A class of Central City students were able to virtually visit CHI Health St. Francis and see their new robot. Dr. Anton Samorvo gave them an online field trip. He says it can take 10 to 12 years to become a robotic surgeon, but because it's not as simple as turning it on and letting it do all the work. Small incisions take care um, of the problem uh, faster. Students named the robot Sergio. The hospital hopes to inspire young people who have an interest in robotics or healthcare to explore career options. There are lots of different opportunities in the operating room. You do not have to be a surgeon to be in the OR. You can start right away out of high school and um, make twelve to fifteen dollars. Whoops, make twelve to fifteen dollars an hour and um, work your way up and use your facilities tuition reimbursement um, to pay. They'll pay for you to go to school. St. Francis opened this thirty two million dollar surgery addition last year. The staff says they're trying to stay on the cutting edge and that means high tech tools and reaching future scientists. Happening right now, UNL is celebrating the life of a longtime law faculty member. 75-year-old Anna William Shavers passed away over the weekend. She worked at UNL for more than three decades. Chancellor Ronnie Green responded to her passing in a tweet calling her a leader in too many ways to chronicle in the UNL family and community. Very hard to say goodbye. May you rest in peace. And we're going to be bringing you more from that memorial service in our newscast tonight at 10 o'clock. Time now for our first forecast. Boy, John, it was another mild day. How high did our temperatures get? Yeah, it was a little deceiving. We actually hit 46 degrees in Lincoln. I'm going to call it an overachieving day because I thought we'd only be in the upper 30s. We ended up seeing a little bit more sunshine this morning and the cold air that is coming it's just been slow to arrive because notice in Columbus right now it's down to 33 degrees. So there is that cooler air coming. I thought it would be in several hours earlier than that. And that's why we ended up at 46 this afternoon. Uh, winds are out of the north, northwest sustained upwards of 10 to 20 miles per hour as of five o'clock. And notice on radar, we are detecting a little bit of precipitation out there. Initially right along I-80, we've got some snow shower or make that some rain showers. Now a lot of this is not reaching the ground, although I have seen some video and meteorologist Malcolm Byron tweeted out a little while ago. Also some snow flurries coming down across the, uh, the, the capital city. We've also got some snow showers likely from Columbus down towards Grand Island, but we are not expecting any snow out of this tonight. We'll just be dealing with a few of these little showers as they move through the area. Um, just enough to, to see it out there and that's about it. This is on the leading edge of the cooler air that's starting to work down our way and that's going to send our temperatures down into the teens by tomorrow morning. So 37 degrees at 6 o'clock, 30 degrees by 8 and 26 degrees by 10 is a short 
or a, a quick shot of cool air because we've got warmer temperatures coming around. In fact, we've got a really nice weekend coming our way. The details on that coming up in just a few minutes. I like hearing that. All right. Thank you, John. To national news now, in a speech at the White House today, President Biden officially announcing Supreme Court Justice Stephen Breyer will be retiring after nearly three decades on the high court. The president is promising to nominate a black woman to fill the seat by the end of the next month. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze has the latest from Washington. A defining moment for President Biden and the future of the nation's highest court. The president formally announcing Supreme Court Justice Stephen Breyer will retire at the end of the court's term in June. And Biden's promising to nominate a black woman to fill the vacancy. The person I will nominate will be someone with extraordinary qualifications, and that person will be the first black woman ever nominated to the United States Supreme Court. The president called it a bittersweet day, commending Breyer for his 27 years on the bench. A pragmatist who built compromise among his colleagues, Breyer's legacy includes supporting the Affordable Care Act, expanding free speech, and defending a woman's right to choose by upholding abortion rights. I think he's a model public servant in a time of great division in this country. Seeming to acknowledge turbulent times in the country, Breyer said the great American experiment you, is not Mr. over President. yet, calling on the next generation to uphold the Constitution. They'll determine whether the experiment still works. And of course, I am an optimist, and I'm pretty sure it will. Biden says he'll announce his nominee to replace Breyer by the end of February. His first choice is believed to be 51-year-old Judge Katanji Brown Jackson, a former clerk to Justice Breyer, who was confirmed to the D.C. Court of Appeals with some Republican support last year. I'm looking at the, the, the arguments, the facts, and the law. Other contenders include Judge Leandra Kruger of the California Supreme Court, Judge Leslie Abrams Gardner of the U.S. District Court of Georgia, and Judge J. Michelle Childs of the U.S. District Court of South Carolina. Senate Democrats are vowing a swift confirmation process, seeking an opportunity to reset after they failed to pass the Build Back Better bill and voting rights legislation. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. Still to come on the news tonight, one of the most sophisticated pieces of military technology is now at the bottom of the South China Sea. After the break, hear about the race to get that technology back.
Now to that high stakes race to salvage the advanced U.S. Navy fighter jet that crashed in the ocean. China, though, may have a head start in getting its hands on our top secret technology. ABC's Morgan Norwood has the story. One of the most sophisticated pieces of military technology is now at the bottom of the South China Sea. Analysts calling the recovery of that wrecked F-35C a free-for-all. It's almost invisible to radar, and so the construction, the coatings that are on that airplane are of great interest to the Chinese. The Navy says arrangements are already underway to recover an F-35C stealth fighter, which was conducting routine flight operations when it suffered a landing mishap, crashing into the flight deck of the aircraft carrier USS Carl Vinson and then fell into the ocean. The recovery operation could take two weeks. For now, China, which considers the South China Sea its territory, is believed to have shadowed the exercise and might even know the location of the crash. The Chinese are known to have salvage subs that could pick apart parts of the plane, and there's nothing in international law to stop it. I do think it would be lawful as a matter of international law for China to send down uh, uh, drones or remotely operated vehicles to take photographs, to pick up uh, pieces of wreckage um, to try and glean information from the seabed without even attempting to raise it, even if that were possible. Meaning as long as China doesn't keep all the aircraft, it's fair game. Everything about this search is going to be highly classified, and so the public will never know who won the race. And military analysts say that it's unlikely that China will try to salvage this aircraft. Still, recovery of that plane remains likely a top global priority for the U.S. Navy. Still no word yet on what caused the crash. The U.S. Navy telling ABC News that three sailors remain hospitalized in stable condition. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, Los Angeles. No. Your storm alert team forecast with Chief Meteorologist John DeSauer. It ended up being a mild day by late January standards. Lincoln reaching 46 degrees this afternoon. Uh, several degrees warmer than what I thought we would see today. It's, we've got some colder air coming. It's just been slowly working here its way in here instead of getting in here just a little faster like I thought we would see. Mostly cloudy skies right now. We look off to the south and the west. And if you look closely out in the distance, you may even see some precipitation uh, out, out there because there's some falling in some spots, which I'll show you in radar in just a moment. But temperatures are still on the mild side. 42 in Lincoln. It's 40 in Beatrice and 43 in Hebron. Temperatures are cooling though back off to the north and west where it's 33 in Columbus and 34 degrees in York. Winds remain sustained out of the north northwest 10 to 20 miles per hour and even some sustained winds close to 30 miles per hour out towards Grand Island. You can see on the radar some very light showers, uh, some rain showers mixing with some snow showers. Also got a report from up near Branch Oak Lake of some snow showers that having uh, falling up in that area. Also back out towards York and along uh, Highway 30 between Columbus and Kearney. We may see some brief snow showers. These will keep moving off to the south and east. I'm not expecting any accumulation out of this. We may see a dusting in a few spots, but that should be about it. You can see this is on the leading edge of this colder air that's beginning to move into the area. We'll keep a chance for some snow showers for the next several hours, then they should begin to move out of here by 8, 9 o'clock. And you can see that on Stormcast, how these are quickly moving off to the south and east. Now, tonight, temperature-wise, we're going to keep skies mostly cloudy, turning partly cloudy by sunrise. We will drop back down into the teens, so a chilly start tomorrow morning. Temperatures just a degree or two above our normal low temperatures this time of the year. We'll start with some clouds tomorrow morning. These will give way to sunny skies by late morning and early afternoon. In fact, by noon, sunny skies out towards the Tri-Cities. Stormcast still trying to hold on to a few clouds around the Lincoln area, but temperatures will start to warm. We're going to notice a, a pretty sharp gradient in temperatures from Omaha out towards the Tri-Cities. You'll notice a difference between 34 degrees in Omaha, 41 in Lincoln, 48 in Hastings and Kearney, and 46 degrees for high temperature tomorrow in Hebron. Now, the big picture, we're going to have some nice weather around here, especially for the weekend. Saturday will likely to be in the mid 50s. Sunday will probably be up near 50 degrees degrees and on Monday we're likely to see temperatures in the upper 50s and I think some of you could even see 60 degrees Monday afternoon. 
after that, we start to notice some changes coming. A weather system we've been talking about all week long starts to come our way, and long-range computer models suggest much colder air begins to come in back behind that. Uh, we'll tap into some of the coldest air that's sitting up over northern Canada right now, with temperatures potentially going below zero if we get snow out of this weather system. For that, we're looking at a surface low in the Gulf of Mexico, but upper-level energy that's now beginning to move over Russia, and will start to merge with the low over the Gulf of Alaska, and that's what would bring us that chance for us, uh, a winter storm our way by Wednesday of next week. Once once again tonight, hurricane hunters are flying out of Honolulu trying to sample the jet stream that's coming with this storm system as well. And so we can put this into the computer models later tonight and try to get better forecasts. Seven day forecast, nice Saturday, a nice Sunday and a nice Monday. Beyond that, man, hide your eyes if you're scared of or if you don't like cold weather because you're not going to like this forecast. To, uh, 20 degrees for a high on a Wednesday it turns windy with a chance for snow showers. Morning snow showers continuing on Thursday and behind that again, this is all dependent on if we actually get snow on the ground. We may drop to 12 degrees below zero by Friday morning. High temperatures by the end of next week in the single digits and then slowly warming now into the first weekend of February. Again, this is all to depend upon exactly how this plays out for middle of next week. This forecast may be changing some over the next several days as we get more data and we are able to figure out where the storm may end up going. Yeah, definitely something to stay tuned and watch for. So. That's right. All right. Thank you, John. A down day on Wall Street. The Dow dropping just seven points, but NASDAQ is down 189. Here are your numbers. You're watching channel Channel 8, Nebraska's trusted news source. Finally tonight, from a couple of little wonders to one very old soul, we have stories to inspire in tonight's Take a Look at This. Get ready, there's a new young rock star of a designer in town, and she's only nine years old. I basically just start pinning on my mannequin, 
and then just roll with it, whatever idea comes to my mind. Kaya became a TikTok sensation after mom started sharing her daughter's talent on social media. I would just hand her a piece of fabric and within an hour, she would have this beautifully designed piece. Because I thought it was so unique, I thought it was worth sharing. Kaya's creations have even caught the attention of mega designer Vera Wang. And for a different type of inspiration, meet Rosie, the two-year-old African penguin inspiring kids with special needs at the Odyssey Aquarium in Scottsdale, Arizona. Has anybody in this group ever felt different? I know I have. Yeah, for sure. Rosie was born with skeletal abnormalities that weakened her body. So her caregivers at the aquarium built a special sling to help her learn to walk. Now, her sweet shuffle is used to teach kids that different really means awesome. It's pretty cool. It's pretty unique. Daddy! Yeah, was that awesome? <laughs> And finally, how about this for inspiring? Meet Jonathan, the oldest tortoise ever to live. Jonathan was gifted to Sir William Gray Wilson in 1882 and is believed to be close to 200 years old. Wilson eventually moved to the remote island of St. Helena where he would become governor. Photos from that time show a youngest Jonathan roaming the grounds. For Take a Look at This, I'm Steve Nannis. Well, that is all the time that we have for tonight. Stay tuned. World News Tonight with David Muir is coming up next, and then we'll see you right back here at 6 o'clock. Have a wonderful night. With the Channel 8 Eyewitness News mobile app, you'll be the first to know. Get alerts about breaking news and weather, all in the palm of your hand. It takes time to make Amigos enchiladas. It's not the easiest way, just the best. Amigos has the faves you crave.